few months ago, I challenged myself to solo Solak, but I kind of cheated. The only established method to do it at the time was to sit in phase 3 for over 2 hours, slowly dealing damage to the hit cap until the boss HP was low enough to clear without worrying about any mechanics. It took almost 3 hours, and honestly at the end of it, it didn't feel at all satisfying. It wasn't difficult, it was just time consuming, and I'd been flicking my soul split curse for so long I felt like my hands were about to fall off. Phase 4 Solak requires 2 rolls, a realm tank to handle the manifestations in the mind, and a DPSer to deal with the boss outside. It was always established that you need two people to do this boss, one in the realm and one outside. Until a little bit ago when a player by the name of Wave Goodbye discovered a method where you hybrid and you do both roles one at a time. You keep the manifestations in the mind under control and then you quickly go out and have less than 10 seconds to deal damage to Solak. After that, you go back into the mind and try and keep it back under control without getting insta-killed. It's incredibly difficult, but when done correctly, it could allow Solak to be soloed legitimately. No cheating, no cheese strategies, just really solid execution. As soon as he completed the first ever legitimate Solak solo, I knew I wanted to go for it, and earlier today, I got it done. As far as I know, I am the third player to complete this, which is really cool. As for the kill itself, I had to learn a lot about this boss, which works out perfectly anyway because I've been working on my Solak guide for this entire past week. It'll be out pretty soon, by the way. You'll notice if you take a look at my invent that there isn't a lot of invent space for food, and that's not just Switchscape being over the top or me bringing extra switches more than I needed, I needed every single one of these items to complete the kill. This combines both needing to tank for a very long time, possibly needing defensive resets in Acto, but also having some pretty extreme DPS checks as well. Every single item I brought with me was completely necessary, and this was really interesting for me. I had to get a lot better at flicking my soul split curse to keep my life points nice and high, and I also used a lot of defensive abilities, especially on phase 2, just to keep my HP high without having to go through any food. I've greatly sped up phases 2 and 3 as they're pretty straightforward, but phase 1 was actually quite difficult. I actually failed phase 1 more often than I failed the last phase, as the DPS check of the arms and the legs is scaled for 2 people, so I'm having to DPS for 2 and it ends up being very very close every single time. That's why I needed to bring Tectonic, and that's also why I was on a Steel Titan. Without both of those things, there's not a chance. If you fail to kill the arms and legs in time, you end up not making any progress through the phase and you also take a ton of damage. If you can't get them down in time, you basically have to restart. There's no point continuing. In order to get out of phase 1, you have to take out the arms and the legs three times in a row. That'll give you enough time to finish off the blight core, which initiates phase 2. Yes, dude! Oh my god! We did it! Okay, sweet. Oh, if I fail this now... No! No, 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 no! Buddy, 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 buddy! Okay, we're good. Because there are no DPS checks in Phase 2, I took this phase slower than the Continental Drift. I threw on the act though, and I was camping defensives pretty much the entire time. For ultimate abilities, although I did sunshine a couple times, I was mostly rotating barricade and immortality. I was using resonance as often as I possibly could, and I was also using debilitate and reflect pretty much as often as I could. It was a very slow, inefficient way of going about the phase, but who cares? I got through the phase, and that's the important part. If I were to do it again, I might be a little less conservative, because I think I did the entire phase on maybe two sips of brew, so I could have been a little more aggressive, as this should be the last point that I need food. Still, for my first run of things, I've got no complaints. In phase 3, I did a better job of dealing damage to the boss. Solak does pretty much nothing this entire phase, so it's pretty easy to get back all of your HP just with resonance, the occasional devotion, and maybe a bit of soul split flicking too. 
After phase one, you don't really have anything to worry about until phase four. And phase four is absolutely wild. When you go into the mind realm on the last phase, upwards of 10 manifestations can spawn. Each manifestation can hit over 1500 damage through your prayer. And while you're in the realm, you can't eat food. I mean, you can eat it, but it just won't heal anything. In order to get this, I'm gonna have to survive in that realm for upwards of three minutes. Sometimes I won't have a lot of adrenaline and I'm gonna have to manage my ability cooldowns extremely well. Let's slow this back down to real time and watch the last phase. In the last phase, there are two separate HP bars. The top one is how many life points Solak has left in the real world. If I can get this down to zero, I've got the kill. The manifestations in the realm will be attacking Solak unless I can grab their aggression and have them attack me instead. If they finish off the bottom HP bar before I can finish off the top one, I get insta-killed. It's time to race. little realm. Also, I know I zerked in my wrong gear. Very aware. There's kind of a lot of multitasking going on right now. So, you know, it happens, eh? I thought I, I thought I failed by 700 life points. I got it with the poison. Oh my god. Oh, I'm the happiest man in Gilmore. I don't even know where my headphones are. I literally threw them. Oh my god, we did it. We freaking championed that. I am officially the third person in the world to solo Solak. 162 grimy irates worth every freaking penny, dude. If you're wondering how I got that, Solak has a thing where if you die to the insta-kill, but you finish off Solak's life points before your dying animation ends, you will actually end up being resurrected and it counts as a legitimate kill. So I failed, I didn't do enough damage in time, I put on Wrath, which does work, but then I panicked and I accidentally flicked back to Magic Prey. 
I died, and then my Steel Titan, like an absolute champion, decides that is the perfect moment to spec and finish the job. I think I had one game tick there, so 0.6 seconds before my death would have counted. So, a little closer than you'd probably want, but that is a legitimate solo select kill start to finish.